So our topic for today is pre-term labor and I'm also covering this PROM new guideline in this, okay? So can you able to see the screen so we can start? Got it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. So now, first thing is the numbers. See, remember, while in part two, do one thing. While you are reading any guidelines, no, just try to write the numbers. I think everyone must have told you till now whenever you are attending a course or in any advice. So try to write the numbers in the top page or anywhere else, okay? Or either make a small book for that guideline, okay? And write the numbers, okay? that it will be helpful because this is this is the thing you can't remember all the numbers you have to revise it revise them often and often okay hmm? so now what is this um this is prom actually there is nice guideline there are no more numbers okay so this is the guard numbers mostly with the prom guide prom guidelines so now p prom complicates around three percent of the pregnancy okay and uh it is associated with almost 30% of the preterm labels, okay? So, median latency is for pre-prom. That is, uh, time from pre-prom, the birth is around 7 days, okay? And this is the increased risk of su subsequent pregnancy. Odds ratio is 8.7 in white women, while subsequent risk in black women, odds ratio is 7.2, okay? So this is the number. Actually, I know where I, uh, why I'm taking this class is not to you tell you the number and all these things. What is the confusing part and how you're going to remember it, okay? So for that, I am I am doing this because otherwise this guideline is small. These both guidelines are very small and they're very easy otherwise, okay? So now remember, you have to do, like these three slides are very much important. Whenever you are going to give a progesterone, then you're going to give both surplus. Okay, so first, patient should have both. That is history of spontaneous preterm and cervical length less than 25 millimeter. Okay, then you can give either progesterone or either cerclage. Okay, so if both factors, see important both factors are one is the previous history of preterm and second history of cervical length like that is ultrasound examination so these are the two factors which are the pre uh, uh which will determine the pre uh, whether it the preterm will occur or not so in if the both factors are present you can offer either vaginal progesterone or cervical cerclage prophylactic cerclage okay so this is the two both should be present to offer this thing okay now when you want to only progesterone when you can give is they consider it is not offered that also remember so there is no need that you have to give them compulsory but you can consider okay if patient has either factor that is she may have preterm in previous pregnancy or this ultrasound shows that cervical length is less than 25 25 or less than 25 okay uh, and the scan should be done between 16 to 24 weeks so if any one factor is there Consider progesterone. It is not compulsory to give, but you can consider. But here, no circlage. If only one factor is present, no circlage. Only progesterone that too you can consider. Okay. And it is, you have to start between 16 to 24 weeks and continue at least 34 weeks. Okay. Now next, circlage. When you, you want to do the circlage, okay. So, cerclage is, there is definitely, when you do want to do the cerclage, definitely the cervical length should be 25 mm or less. And along with that, previous history of P-PROM should be there or history of cervical trauma like bone biopsy, leads, okay, anything. Hmm? So, if there is previous history of P-PROM or cervical trauma and along with right now the cervical length is less, then offer, profile, consider prophylactic cerclage, not offer. So, offer is the only first slide. See, wait. So, offer is the only first slide. If both are present, you can either do circlash or can give progesterone. 
progesterone if only one factor is present consider progesterone don't do cerclage and cerclage only thing when there is cervical trauma or deep trauma then consider cerclage so till now clear now don't make confusion in this because people make confusion with this only where to do cerclage and where to give progesterone so clear till now yes yeah so both factors should be present to do either this thing either progesterone or cerclage okay and to do cerclage either cervical trauma or previous pre prom should be there okay now there is rescue cerclage so rescue cerclage where when you want to do so here now see there will be so many questions cervix is dilated and all these things so in that case you are not going to do this rescue cerclage only thing exposed unruptured membranes hmm? remember that thing for rescue cerclage the membrane should be exposed and unruptured and it can be done between 16 to 27 weeks 6 days that is 16 to almost 28 weeks got it hmm? and you should not do rescue cerclage whenever there are signs of infection active vaginal bleeding or when you try so when she is in preterm labor see there will be question patient is having contraction she is in preterm labor now you can't do the rescue cerclage rescue cerclage means painless dilatation and along with that membrane should be exposed okay Ah, remember that thing well that when the patient is in preterm labor she is having uterine contractions you don't do rescue cerclage for that okay at least don't offer uh, give this option okay got it now next thing is when you are going to give the tocolysis in case of preterm labor hmm? so preterm labor only thing now see there are three suspected preterm uh, suspected preterm diagnosed preterm and established preterm there are three types of preterm to consider in this guidelines okay hmm? one is suspected preterm when you have not done either tvs or fibronectin okay then diagnosed preterm that is with either fibronectin or tvs cervical length and then established preterm okay hmm? so in these three things treatment is different and different okay so now see whenever you are thinking of tocolysis first choice is always nifedipin second choice is atosibin okay first choice is nifedipin second choice is atosibin okay got it yes ma'am yeah yes so, second and definitely no beta mimetics so never mm. do see only yes. thing for if nifedipine is contraindicated then atosibine okay that is oxytocin receptor antagonist now in preterm you are going to give tocolysis from 26 weeks up to 34 weeks okay that is 33 weeks 6 days when she is in preterm labor that is suspected or diagnosed okay it is not that only for the period of the steroids like aph or something okay you have to give the tocolysis up to 34 weeks okay from 26 weeks and you can consider from 24 weeks to 26 weeks okay so from 24 to 25 weeks 6 days you can consider when they have intact membranes now it is different from p uh, p uh, pre prom you don't have to give tocolysis in premature uh, uh, rupture of membranes okay preterm premature rupture of membranes okay got it so only in preterm when the membranes are intact you can give tocolysis up to 34 weeks from 26 weeks and you can consider from 24 to 26 weeks okay now as i told you suspected preterm when you are going to uh, use this definition suspected preterm means they are having contractions okay they are contractions they are having contractions and associated with pain okay so that is the suspected now this suspected preterm becomes diagnosed preterm then when you are doing transvaginal ultrasound okay now transvaginal ultrasound no need to do before 30 weeks so in from 26 weeks to 30 weeks only suspected preterm you don't have to diagnose it okay start with treatment with suspected preterm okay 
from 30 weeks onwards you have to diagnose hmm? so how you are going to diagnose is first thing is transvaginal ultrasound now here cervical length is not 25 it is 15 okay so first method of diagnosis is transvaginal ultrasound after 30 weeks got it okay so you don't have to diagnose yes, before 30 weeks from 26 weeks to 30 weeks only depending on the symptoms you will label the patient as suspected preterm okay and start tocolysis okay after 30 weeks first diagnose okay first diagnose with transvaginal ultrasound so first modality is transvaginal ultrasound and here cervix length is not 25 it is 15 hmm? okay so now when if transvaginal ultrasound is not available or not acceptable then only you have to do fibronectin fetal fibronectin okay so why fetal fibronectin you want to do to see whether the birth is imminent within 48 hours okay and fetal fibronectin also you have to do it after 30 weeks not before 30 weeks okay so this option C in EMQs, fibronectin, transvaginal ultrasound will not come before 30 weeks. It will come after 30 weeks only. So from 30 to 34 weeks, you can do either transvaginal ultrasound. When it is available, first modality of choice is transvaginal. If it is not available or patient is not willing, then go for the fetal fibronectin. Now fetal fibronectin significant values is more than 50. Okay. So it is a diagnosed preterm. Ultrasound cervix length less than 15 mm, fetal fibronectin more than 50 mm, uh, 15 nanogram per ml. So these are the diagnosed preterm labor. Now don't offer transvaginal ultrasound along with fibronectin. Don't need you don't have to do two tests in combination. You have to do only one test. And when it is vaginal uh, transvaginal ultrasound TVS is available, do TVS. If TVS is not available or patient doesn't want, then go for the fibronectin. Okay. And if there are... Ma'am. No uh, yes. Uh, the dictum is before 30 weeks, symptom will be the uh, definitive for the diagnosis. Yeah. And yes. after 30 weeks, TVS and fetal fibronectin. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. So it is in the... See, it, this is for EMQ basically. Okay, so after 30 weeks, you are going to first diagnose. Before 30 weeks, you will start treatment with symptoms only. Okay, when TVS and fibronectin, both are not available. Okay, in suspected preterm, after 30 weeks, both are not available. Then start treatment as a case of suspected preterm only. Okay, but don't start treatment if it is available. Then first diagnose it and then do it. Okay, then start the treatment. Okay. Got it? Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So clear about yes, ma'am. Clear about the diagnosis. There is no confusion now. So before 30 weeks, no test. After 30 weeks, test. And uh, from 24 to 26 weeks, only consider. You don't have means need not offer, but consider. Okay. Got it? Now yes, next. Ma yes, ma'am. Yes. So now yes, ma'am. For this treatment of preterm labor, there are only three things. One is corticosteroids. Second is uh, tocolysis and third is Maxell. So each have their own criteria. Okay, so we will discuss those things now. So corticosteroids. Now there is major change here actually in the previous guidelines. So there may be different answers in the books. Okay, that's why you might get confused. Hmm? In previous books, there can be different answer. What is the day? <coughs> Sorry. What is the change is? Previously, they used to tell that from 24 to means like uh, 24 to 25 weeks, six days. That is before 26 weeks. Consider it was no offer. Okay. Hmm? So steroids now you have to offer from 24 weeks onwards, and before that only consider. Okay. So from 24 to 34, you have to give steroids, and in which cases suspected, diagnosed, and established. Or planned preterm for any other like SGA or previous uh, or severe period, eclampsia, APH. For all these things, you have to offer. Don't consider. So from 24 to 34, yes, give steroids. Okay. But 
before 24 that is 23 to 23 weeks 6 days so before 23 weeks no need to give steroids remember well before 23 weeks 0 days no steroids okay 23 to 23 weeks 6 days consider individualized okay and then offer Offer means it is recommended that you have to give steroids from 24 weeks to 33 weeks, 6 days. Okay. Now from 34 weeks to 35 weeks, 6 days, again consider. Okay. Hmm? For all these preterms that is suspected, diagnosed, established, planned or preterm. Got it clear for steroids now? So here only thing books may have different answer, previous books. Okay. If you, if the previous editions are there. Okay. So, you have to offer from 24 weeks. Got it? This is the major change in the guideline from the previous version. Okay? Clear for steroids? No doubt for steroids? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Now, whether you want to give repeat dose or not. So, you should not give repeat dose. Okay? Hmm? Now, why this betamethasone and dexamethasone are preferred? Because they have more potent glucocorticoid option and insignificant mineralocorticoid action. Okay. And minimum placental metabolism. Okay. So, this is the preferred steroids. Okay. And single repeat course can be given in selective patients. Now, nowhere they have mentioned what is this selective patients. Okay. But routinely, you should not repeat the course of steroids. Okay. Got it? And single repeat course means two doses of betamethasone or four doses of dexamethasone. Okay. Clear? Yes, yes ma'am. This is from the top yes, line. So it can be a SBAC. More these have more potent betamethasone, dexamethasone have more potent glucocorticoid action. It is by 20 to 30 folds. Okay. Poor uh, substrate for placental metabolism and they have very insignificant mineralocorticoid action. So uh, all this it can come as SBA. This is the new talk, no last year's talk for uh, corticosteroids. Okay. And single repeat course can be given for selected patients. But now they have not mentioned selected patients means exactly which indication. Okay. Hmm? Now steroids is over. Second thing is Maxil. So for whom you are going to give Maxil? Again, it comes from. 24 now maxel doesn't come for 34 weeks. It will be offered from 24 to 30 weeks. That is 29 weeks, 6 days. You have to offer. Okay. As usual for everything 23 to 23 weeks, 6 days. Individualize. Okay. Offer maxel from 24 weeks to 30 weeks. That is 29 weeks, 6 days. And now here. See, it is for established preterm. It is not for suspected, not for diagnosed. Okay, it is for established preterm. Who he is having good contraction along with cervical dilatation. Okay, got it? Where delivery is imminent. Okay, so don't give Maxell for suspected preterm only for established preterm, or sometimes you plan the delivery. Okay. Like for HGA fetus, like for severe preeclampsia, okay, you will plan the delivery where you have to give Maxell 24 hours before, okay, for neuroprotection. Hmm? Now you can consider from 30 to 34 weeks, hmm? that is 30 weeks to 33 weeks, 6 days. In SME, same, you don't have to give in suspected preterm, okay. What is the dose? It is a 4 gram intravenous as a bolus over 15 minutes and followed by IV infusion 1 gram per hour until the birth or for 24 hours, whichever is sooner. So you can give until the delivery or for maximum 24 hours. Okay. Got it? And now, as usual, for if you are giving magnesium sulfate, you have to monitor. Hmm? What you have to monitor is pulse, blood pressure, respiratory rate and depend on reflexes. Okay. Every 4 hourly. 
So, hmm? so ma'am, prophylactic. We will not give Maxell specifically in a case of monocoronic plas, uh, like monocoronic uh, mono amniotic twins, where we deliver okay, by thirty no. thirty. Okay. Okay. When you, yeah, when, okay. when it is planned, like you have planned section or planned induction. Uh, Tapasya, can you mute your mic, please, Doctor Tapasya? Can you mute your mic, please? Yes, thank you. So, got it. Like when you are doing any planned cesarean section or any planned induction before 30 weeks or before 34 weeks. So before 30 weeks you have to offer, you have to give. Before 34 weeks you can consider. Okay. So that is we are giving prophylactically. Yes, yes. Even for established preterm also you are giving prophylactically. Okay. Only thing suspected preterm you don't have to give. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So this is the dose and then you have to monitor and if the patient has oliguria you have to monitor more frequently. So routinely you have to monitor every 4 hourly. If the patient has oliguria or other signs of renal failure monitor more frequently and think of reducing the dose also. So see whenever the patient whether the question comes of transferring the uh, like in utero transfer okay transferring the patient from one unit to other unit. So you can't give this maxel because it requires mo monitoring. Got it? When you are transferring, during transfer, don't yes. give this. Hmm? Hmm? Because there are questions like that. Correct? So you should not give maxel during transfer because you have to monitor it. Okay? For its toxicity. So, till now, I think I have clear regarding corticosteroids, Maxell, and tocolysis. So, tocolysis, till 34 weeks, you have to give tocolysis. And first choice is nifedipine, second choice is letosibon. Don't give beta mimetics. Okay, no? So, this is the only thing for tocolysis. Okay? Now, fetal scalp electrode. So, less than 34 weeks, better not to use. Okay? Like you can use when you have to use every everything should be present in all this thing. That is, it is not possible to monitor fetal heart rate using external CTG or intermittent auscultation. It should be discussed with senior obstetrician. Benefits are likely to outweigh the potential risk and alternatives. That is uh, explained to her and it is unacceptable to her. Okay. From 34 to 37 weeks, from that is 36 weeks, 6 days. Mm -hmm. If it is not possible to monitor with CTG or intermittent auscultation, you can discuss with the patient and use fetal scalp electrode. Okay. So, better thing remember here is before 34 weeks, don't use fetal scalp electrode. Okay. Don't use FSC before 34 weeks. Okay. Same with fetal blood sampling. Don't do FBS before 34 weeks. Okay. Between 34 to 36 weeks, 6 days, you can consider, but you have to discuss and see that benefits are likely to outweigh the risks. Okay. And tell her that if the uh, sometimes it is not possible, you will try to do FBS, but it is not possible, then mostly then cesarean section is required because fetal blood sampling you are doing for the pathological CTG. Correct. Okay. Hmm? Got it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, so, if you see an ABS, don't do before 34 weeks. That is the thing. Okay. Hmm? Now, preterm bridge. Preterm bridge, suspected, diagnosed, established, all preterm bridge. Okay. Do the consider cesarean section from 26 weeks onwards only. 26 weeks to 37 weeks. Preterm bridge consider cesarean section. Okay. So here definitely the question can be there. Yes, preterm bridge. If she is in imminent labor, like she will deliver, like in second stage, sometimes she has come with eight nine centimeters dilatation. Then think of vaginal delivery, but otherwise go for the cesarean section. Okay. Until the labor is uh, sorry, delivery is imminent. Now when you are going to Cord the clamp. 
okay if the if the baby is more preterm and she the baby requires resuscitation immediate resuscitation or there is maternal bleeding is significant so that it, uh, 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 the uh, fetal blood extension can be there so in that case consider milking the cord and clamp the cord as soon as possible okay so you have to clamp the cord asap when when the baby wants resuscitation the newborn wants uh, is uh, is in need of resuscitation or there is uh, there is significant maternal bleeding okay otherwise at least wait for 30 seconds but no longer than 3 minutes before clamping the cord so for term babies you can wait till 5 minutes remember this thing okay but in preterm it don't wait longer than 3 minutes okay hmm? so wait at least for 30 seconds now in term babies what they are telling wait for at least 1 minute okay in preterm wait for at least 30 seconds and no longer than 3 minutes and definitely position of the baby should be at least at the level or below the level of placenta. Okay. So, this is regarding cord clamping. SBA can be there. So, don't wait no, uh, for uh, longer than 3 minutes. Okay. If the baby is stable, mother and baby is stable. Got it? Now, see this is from the uh, PPROM guidelines. So, what are the complications of PPROM? Is premature labor, sepsis, cord prolapse, pulmonary hypoplasia, choriamnionitis, and placental abruption? Yes, any doubt? Yes, anybody was talking? No. Okay. So, I, okay. So, now how you are going to diagnose? Okay, PPROM. So, first is the History plus speculum examination, sterile speculum examination. When you are seeing the fluid, amniotic fluid, the diagnosis is complete. No need to do any test. Okay. If you can see the amniotic fluid on sterile speculum examination, no need to do other test. Okay. But if there is no amniotic fluid is seen, okay. If no amniotic fluid is seen, then you have to do this test. And this test has to be done on the vaginal fluid. So, which are these tests? Is IgA, BP, or PAMG1. Okay. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Hmm? So, these are the tests, and this you have to done, do on the amniotic fluid, not in the blood. Okay. Hmm? So, it is the insulin like growth factor and Placental associated. So these are the two tests you have, that you have to do. Okay. No, don't do nitrazine. Don't do nitrazine. Nitrazine is that litmus paper test. Okay. Don't do nitrazine. It is not recommended. Huh? If the woman is in established labor, then no need to do any test. Okay. Ultrasound assessment. Don't use ultrasound assessment for the diagnosis of P prom. Okay. Got it? Yes, ma'am. So, only thing what you have to do is first the speculum examination and then these are the tests on this IgMDP and EMG. Okay. So, these are the tests on this vaginal fluid, not on the blood. Mm -hmm. Remember that is the thing because we don't, uh, this thing, we don't remember sometimes. Okay. So, this test you have to do it on the amniotic fluid, that is vaginal fluid. We don't, whether we are, when we are not sure whether it is amniotic fluid or vaginal discharge. Okay. Don't use litmus paper or nitrazine. No tests are required if the patient is in labor. Okay. And then, see, this vaginal swab in UK, they are doing routinely. Okay. Hmm? For PPROM, they are doing vaginal swab to find out any infection is there. But still, this practice is not recommended as such. But then they are doing. Okay. Hmm? So, it is not a guideline that it should be done. But they do it routinely. Okay. Now, when the patient comes with pre P prom, you have to monitor this patient. Okay. So, how you are going to monitor? Because you have to monitor for choriomnionitis. Correct. So, how you are going to monitor is clinical assessment. Hmm? Clinical assessment, blood test. Blood test is what? Sigri active protein and WSC count. And fetal heart rate. So, these are the three things that you have to use for the diagnosis of choriomnionitis and don't use any single thing to diagnose this infection okay that 
if only C reactive protein is increased or only WBC count is increased, don't diagnose chorionitis. Take into account all clinical pictures, blood signs, and every blood test and uh, fetal heart abnormalities. Everything you have to take into account. Okay. Now, clinical signs. What are the clinical signs? Is pain, abnormal vaginal discharge, fever, malaise, and reduced fetal movements. So these are the clinical signs of chorionitis, and patient is asked to observe. Okay. So these signs. Okay. And see, when you are giving corticosteroids, when you are going giving steroids, definitely WBC count is going to rise for 24 hours. Okay. And it comes to baseline three days. So take into account that also when you are uh, thinking of this blood test. Okay. So take into account this thing that the WBC count is going to rise in the first 24 hours and it will take three days to come to baseline. Now, as an inpatient, you have to monitor this uh, PROM for vital signs, okay? Huh? And you have to uh, record it on the early warning chart, okay? New chart, hmm? obstetric early warning signs chart, okay? Then, when you, when you are treating this PROM as outpatient, so patients are Patients have to be told regarding these all signs that is pain, vaginal discharge, reduced fetal movements, fever. Huh? And then either week or twice weekly or alternate day, you have to do this blood test. That is what WBC count and three reactive protein. Okay. And if she has any concern, she should attend the hospital immediately. So you can manage this e prom at home or as an inpatient also. Okay. So, they, it is not clear cut mention that you have to admit the patient of EPROM. You can admit or you can manage them at home also. Okay. Hmm? And definitely, when EPROM is confirmed and if a, a, it is delivery is anticipated, consult with the neonatologist and also give an opportunity to, the, to that woman also to meet the neonatologist before the uh, birth and to discuss the bear regarding the baby okay now p prom huh? antibiotic you are going to give it for 10 days erythromycin p prom starts with erythromycin and steroids okay hmm? management that is erythromycin 250 milligram qid that is four times a day for 10 days or until the woman is established in in established labor okay if the erythromycin Allergy to erythromycin, sensitivity to erythromycin, you can use penicillin. Okay. Hmm? But you should not use coamaxiclav. Hmm? Because it is associated with increased risk of necrotizing enter enterocolitis. And unless the PPROM is confirmed, don't give any antibiotics. So when it is confirmed that it is a PPROM, then give erythromycin 250 milligrams four times a day for 10 days. If allergic to erythromycin, give penicillin. Here. Yeah. Now same. Corticosteroids. Okay. That is offer from 24 weeks up to 34 weeks. Consider from 34 to 36 weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now remember well. Previously we used to thought that it reduces the risk of RDS, intraventricular hemorrhage and necrotizing enterocolitis. Correct. So now. Remember that it has been shown that steroids will reduce the risk of respiratory distress syndrome and intraventricular hemorrhage only. Okay. No difference is there for necrotizing enterocolitis, neonatal sepsis, and Abgar score less than 7 minutes. Eh, sorry, less than 7 for 5 minutes. Got it? This is the important. This is the, in the new guideline of PPROM. So, it will reduce the risk of RDS and intraventricular hemorrhage. But there is no difference with necrotizing enterocolitis, neonatal sepsis and Abgar score less than 7. Okay? Because this is a new change, it can come. Hmm? And there is no increased risk of chorioamnionitis and neonatal sepsis if you give maternal steroids. So, in case of chorioamnionitis also, you can give maternal steroids. Okay? Got it? For baby's betterment. Clear? See, in case of maternal sepsis also, for baby, steroids are recommended. Maternal steroids can be given. They are not contraindicated in case of sepsis also.
then same maxself okay maxself as i told you from 24 weeks to 30 weeks offer from 30 weeks to 34 weeks you can consider so what it is going to do is reduce cerebral palsy and motor dysfunction the offspring okay hmm? and the benefits benefits are greatest before 30 weeks okay see tocolysis is not recommended okay p prom only preterm tocolysis is recommended for p prom tocolysis you should not give hmm? because it increases the risk of maternal chorionitis okay hmm? this is i already told you that don't give tocolysis for p prom hmm? so as i told you hospital care home care it depends on the individual basis okay if delivery is imminent then admit her if delivery is not imminent uh, you can offer the care at home also so which factors determine it is the past obstetric history support at home and distance of distance from the home to the hospital okay and along with that how much uh, uh, like uh, uh, delivery latency also should be taken into account like sometimes antepartum hemorrhage hmm? in that case better to admit her okay less amniotic fluid volume hmm? okay see what they have done what they are telling is e prom who have reduced afi okay on ultrasound they are they are increased chances to give birth within the 7 days of pre prom okay so usually mean latency as i told you it is 7 days from pre prom to the delivery okay so what are this increased risk of complication in case of pre prom so what are this fracture uh, what are the what are those factors is membrane rupture <coughs> At before at or before 26 weeks, non ketalic presentation and oligohedriumness. These three factors increases the risk of complications. So, which complications can occur? Stillbirth can occur, placental abruption can occur, umbilical cord prolapse can occur. Okay, delivery outside the hospital sometimes can occur, sudden precipitate labor, and chances of neonatal death. So, with these complications, see, with sorry. With these complications, hospital care is advised. That is membrane rupture before 26 weeks, non-kephalic presentation, and oligohydrogenous. Hmm? So better to admit them. Okay. Now amnio infusion is not recommended. Okay. Remember well that amnio infusion is not recommended. And yes, emotional support. They have to, we have to provide emotional support. Okay. Hmm. Now, till, till what time you can continue this pregnancy for P-PROM is you can continue up till, up till 37 weeks. Huh? Expectant management. Expectant management means what you are going to do? Only you are going to give antibiotics, okay? And steroids. And max self if the delivery is imminent, okay? No tocolysis. But you can continue up to 37 weeks. Now, future pregnancies, as I told you, this is risk of recurrence is there. So, how you are going to take the care in future pregnancies? So, better to, uh, these uh, patients should be hoined over to the, have the obstetrician who have the interest in preterm birth, okay? That is in dedicated preterm clinic. Mm -hmm. Smoking, respiratory diseases should be more, uh, take, uh, taken care. That is, smoking should be reduced. Uh, Respiratory diseases should be making the control, like cystic fibrosis, asthma, okay, COPD. They should be uh, uh, should be under tight control, okay. Hmm? And screening for lower genital tract infection, like bacterial vaginosis, okay. Huh? And so you can continuously screen in the antenatal care uh, throughout the antenatal care for this uh, chances when there there are there is history of previous P prom. Better to check for this all lower, uh, lower genital tract infections, okay? And also cervical length, cervical serial cervical length measurement you can offer, but definitely it is not compulsory, okay? It is not a recommendation, but yes, you can offer or uh, you can consider that is genital lower genital tract infection screening and serial uh, cervical length ultras, uh, serial ultrasound for cervical length measurement. Okay, in future pregnancies, I'm telling. Okay. 
what is so this is regarding the guideline i think most doubts are clear by now okay so what do you want me to do now to solve the preterm questions or you will try on yourself my it is there ah yes Mm. Ma'am, could you please show the first five slides? I have missed it. Please. First slides. Okay, just I will show you. First five slides. Okay. okay. So first is the numbers. Okay, you can get it from the from guidelines. There are no numbers in the nice guideline. Okay. Hmm. Just as a matter, I am showing these numbers. Okay, because you have to write these numbers. Make it a habit that you will do it. Okay, while you are reading the guidelines. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Now next is see when you are offering like there is always question regarding whether to give progesterone or cervical surplus, correct? So you can give either of the both. Either you can give progesterone or cervical surplus to women who have both factors like history of preterm labor plus in this pregnancy cervical length less than 25, 25 or less than 25. So if these both factors are present, you can either give progesterone or you can do prophylactic cervical surplus. Okay. Hmm. Now next is you can give profile uh, prophylactic progesterone only. Like if any one factor is present, like previous preterm history or in this pregnancy cervical length is less than twenty five, you can give consider giving progesterone. Don't do cervical here. Okay. And then cervical cervical is done. Who has the previous history? That is sorry. Uh, cervical cervical is done for the Cervical length less than 25, along with either history of cervical trauma like cone biopsy leads, okay, or history of preterm uh, PPROM in the previous pregnancy. So in those patients, you can do prophylactic surcharge, okay. Yes, Doctor Dinesh. Okay, yes, ma'am. Ma yeah, yeah. Now I can hear you. Can you? Yes, you can ask your doubt. Ma. <laughs> breach is a like a twenty eight big breach with a four centimeter dilated. So then they do will consider C section or vaginal delivery. Do section. Hello. Do do cesarean. But ma'am, uh, preterm breach. Yes. Okay. Okay. Unless she is. I'm only getting eight centimeter. Then only we'll do or there's some cut off like after how many is dilated? How much centimeter dilatation are we allowed? Because ma'am, preterm breach labor then can be. See now they are telling in the according to breach guidelines, we, uh, the breach GTG is there. They are telling they are telling that don't offer routinely C-section to all preterm breach, correct? Hmm? If the breach is if the preterm yes. breach come in the established labor, so now you have to take into consideration all the fa other factors also. Okay, like how much dilatation is there? How uh, what is her station? Other risk factors. And like uh, this thing that high extended neck and everything should not be there. Okay, so you can go for cesarean section okay. in the question. Okay, if the dilatation is less. Okay, if the, they will give you the okay. hint that the delivery is imminent, because yes, this question can come in the EMQs, and if you get the hint that delivery is imminent, then go for vaginal delivery. If delivery is not imminent, then go for the section. Okay. Okay. Mm. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So, should we go to the lay, uh, preterm labor questions, or you will do on your no, own? No, question. Questions. Okay. Question. Okay. Okay. So can you see the this thing? Can you see screen? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So this is the AMQ. I think everyone has got uh, this thing only with this. Uh, Everyone has got doubt, no? With this question only, first the EMQ only. 
Yeah, what uh, Kruti is asking, my issue. See, yeah, uh, there is one doubt with Dr. Krutika. She is asking this thing. What uh, rescue circulage can be done up to 30, uh, 30 weeks, okay? Like uh, I have mentioned till 30 weeks, some post says that at 32 weeks also you can do. See, after 30 weeks, I don't think there is any, uh, uh, this thing is doing in rescue circulage, okay? So see, till, I, uh, till only 28 weeks, not 30 weeks also, okay? Only 28 weeks, from 16 weeks to 28 weeks, and that too for, it is not like established preterm, okay? Only exposed membranes. Hmm? Okay? So, at lateral gestational age, it is not much useful. It, benefits are likely to cater for the earlier gestations, okay? So, till 28 weeks only, you can do rescue circulation, not after 28 weeks, according to guidelines, okay? Okay, so this is the okay. We will go to the first question. I think first question was discussed in it, correct? There was some alteration in the answer. So, first question it is a 28 weeks mm -hmm. pregnancy, already she has received the steroids. She is in the threatened preterm. Okay. Now complaining of pain in abdomen and mild contraction. So it is 28 weeks. So you are not going to confirm the diagnosis. Correct. And she is having paras service 3 centimeters dilated. So here what comes is the. She has already received the steroids. So better to give her tocolysis. Okay. And because she is 3 centimeter dilatation. You can give her maxilf also. Correct. Because she is having contractions yeah. and 3 centimeter dilated. Okay. Hmm? So here option is yes, administer max self mm -hmm. and expectant management. Okay. Actually, there should be tocolysis also in that case. Okay. For this patient. Okay. So there are there should be three. Hmm? That is max self and tocolysis and expectant management. Got it? For that. Yes, if, if the option is to be complete, then. Huh? Now here option is not complete though you can go for because she is 3 centimeters dilated that means you, you have to give her she is in established preterm. So you have to give her axle. Now next is previous analysis with preterm bridge at 28 weeks 2 days. She has already received steroids. Had heavy bleeding. Now she is APH. Okay. Right now it is settled but complaining of pain in abdomen. Irritable uterus is there. 3 centimeter dilatation is there. And it is a breach. Breach with APH at 28 weeks, no role of steroids. APH, no role of steroids. She has already received steroids. Sorry, no role of tocolysis. She has received already steroids. So now, give myself and do section. Correct? Huh? Got it? Now, third thing is multiplamida, yes, 22 weeks. Hmm? Admitted with pain. Ma'am, she's in term, term, term breach and she's um, already 3 centimeters. So if we give Maxel and uh, wait for 24 hours, will she not get more? Actually, this option, I am also not telling. Actually, we should give Maxel till the time, but only thing we have to do section. Okay? It is not technically one section, but if we think that she will go in the labor and because she is having it yet. Right now, it is settled. But if it becomes again started, you have to we have to, okay? we have to do continuous fetal monitoring and depending on that, we have to decide. Okay? See here, see, that's why I'm telling you. Here, the options are somewhat uh, problematic, okay? So, we can't exactly go with these options also. But we can't tell emergency CS also because they have clearly stated that bleeding is now settled. So, give her time for maxilf at least. Okay? Got it? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Now, multigravida with 22 weeks, pain in abdomen, contractions are there, services 2 cm dilated, membranes found prolapsed in vagina. What you are going to do? Observation. 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 Now, membranes are prolapsed in vagina. You can do circulage also, no? rescue circulage, if it is there in the option. 
only thing your contraction yes. should not be there okay hmm? because from 16 weeks to 28 weeks you can do rescue circulation okay if the contractions are not there and only membranes prolapse, then go for rescue circulation. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Now, yes. See, 30 weeks pregnant, first pregnancy, established preterm labor. Go for this, see for these three words, okay? No? Established preterm, but not in advanced labor. Okay? Because of untreated E. coli. Hmm? She is hemodynamically stable, apyrexial, lactate levels are less. So, which treatment and is... Can see the question? Yes? Yes? Can't see the question. Question number four. You can't see? Question number four? It's there, I think. I am able to... The oh. Oh. Uh -huh. So, she is 30 weeks, established preterm, but not in advanced labor. The cause mostly due to E. coli. E. coli UTI, but now patient is hemodynamically stable, she is not having fever. Lactate levels are normal. So, now see here the question. What the question is, which treatment is most likely to improve neonatal outcome? Okay? Got it? Erythromycin. Not erythromycin. Why erythromycin? She is not having P-PROM, no? See antibiotics only in the P-PROM. Structure of membranes. Not it is betamethasone with tocolysis. Okay. Because improve the unit outcome, they are not asking maternal outcome. Okay. Because she is already in established preterm. Okay. So it is betamethasone with tocolysis. If they have given maxel, then you have to add this maxel also in, the, in this. Okay. Yes, ma'am. For huh? E. coli, we will not need anything. Yes, we will give for e. coli. we will give for e coli but which treatment is most likely see that's why i'm telling see for the question most likely to improve neonatal outcome if we treat e coli also right now she is in established preterm so she should receive steroids first got it okay okay hmm? okay if everything okay, is in one, one this thing antibiotics and everything it comes in the one option you can go for one okay but okay. antibiotics is a separate option and steroids is a separate option. Go for steroids. Because yeah. here the question yeah, is yeah. neonatal outcome. Okay. Or neonatal outcome. Ah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so but she is an established preterm. So uh, should she be given tocolysis now? Yes, they have never told that don't give uh, tocolysis for established preterm. Okay. Okay. The guideline says suspected preterm. So. Suspected diagnosis established. Suspected diagnosis also. Everything you can give okay. Okay? okay. Yeah. Now can you see the options and questions also? Yes, yes. ma'am. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. So, we will go with uh, first uh, question number 5. 22 years para 2. 32 weeks. Having abdominal pain and dysuria. Hmm? Urine district showing WBC plus nitrites. Culture is still abated. Spectrum examination cervix is 3 cm with intact membrane. Hmm? So answer. So anything preterm, start with steroids. Anything preterm, start with steroids. Okay. Because this is the thing which is going to be most beneficial for any preterm, okay? Steroids received, go for next option. If steroids not received, go for first steroids, okay? Then think of all antibiotics and everything, okay? Clear? So the answer is dexamethasone. Yes, because here betamethasone is not there. Mm -hmm. hmm? Okay. So question four answer. Anywhere somebody wants. So question one minute. So question four answer you want. So we yeah, it's answer B, I think. Like or point wise, it is uh, B, uh steroid plus tocolysis. It is answer B for question four. Okay. So now question five also answer is B. Hmm? Next question 24 years by me. Hmm? 31 weeks 
Lottery vaginal discharge since two days. Speculum showing clear liquor. She is not in labor. She has received steroids. Now what? P from erythromycin. Yes. Received steroids, erythromycin. Erythromycin. Okay. Yeah. Now next, 34 years, periodic abdominal pain at 33 weeks. She has diabetes, poorly controlled on insulin. Cervix is 2 cm. She has been given first dose of steroid. Hmm? Options. So she has received steroid. She is in preterm. Give her tocolysis. Correct? So now here diabetes and all these things doesn't matter, no? She is in preterm labor, receives steroids, that is receiving steroids, give her tocolysis. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Hmm? And you are not giving any beta myometrics, so there is no question. Yes? Yes? Yeah. Poorly controlled insulin, does it have any relation with this neonatal counts outcome counseling? Yeah, we can counsel, definitely. But see, now here we have to see the most appropriate, okay? So, her start giving treatment and then discuss regarding the outcome. Definitely, we have to discuss the outcomes. Okay? But then, start giving treatment and simultaneously discuss. So, which comes first is important. Okay? Hmm? Okay, ma'am. So, if you yes, give counseling also, you will first start treatment. No, you will do treatment and side by side, you will do counseling. Okay? It's not that you are going to terminate yes, this pregnancy at 31 weeks. Okay, it is because of poor control. Huh? You will increase the insulin and all these things. You will see why it is poorly controlled. Okay, the termination is not the answer here right now. Okay, yes. yeah. now question number eight 31 years, para 2, history of increased vaginal discharge at 32 weeks. Hmm? She is not in labor, no evidence of P prom, high vaginal swab showing bacterial vaginosis. Okay, so bacterial vaginosis treatment. Metronidazole. Yeah, it is oral metronidazole. Okay. Hmm? Now question number nine. So no doubts till this, till question number eight. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Now next. No doubt. Yeah. Okay. So next, Nali Paris. Okay. History of that is finding of a cervical length 18 millimeter with funneling at 23 weeks. Speculum examination, no bulging membranes, no history of cervical trauma, no preterm deliveries. What you are going to do? Now tell me. The phylactic vaginal progesterone. Yes. Okay. The thing is there, give progesterone. Okay. Only ultrasound finding, give progesterone. Okay, na? Don't do circlash till yes, no. there is history of any cervical trauma or P prom. Okay? Or previous preterm. Hmm? Now, 35 years, second pregnancy at 27 weeks. Hmm? She is having abdominal pain, previous normal vaginal delivery at term, three years back. All observation normal. CTG showing one to two irregular contraction every 10 minutes. So, she is suspected preterm. Okay? The fetal heart trace is normal. Vaginal examination, it is 50% decreased cervix but closed. So, it is a suspected preterm, not established. And you are not going to diagnose also. We will start with oral nephrotypy. Ocolytic. Yes. Okay. Start treatment with oral nephrotypy. Okay. So, now you are not going to do transvaginal scan or fibronectin. You are going to do it after... 30 weeks. 30 yes. weeks. Okay. So now I think clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Can you see this question? Options yes, plus question. Question 11 and 12. Okay. So question 11 is 36 weeks pregnant. Hmm? Previous pregnancy GBS positive and treated. Now came with? Spontaneous rupture of membrane. Right now, 36 weeks spontaneous rupture of membrane. We know everyone knows this question. This question is repeated 100 times. Yes? Mm. What? It is IAP plus induction of labor because it is a, a previous GBS positive. 
you have to induce you should not wait for 24 hours correct okay and because previous gb is positive you have Remember to I have yes is dr dinesh no no ma'am doubt is clear here yeah. 28 weeks with t prompt hmm? okay in but what would training, be the answer h i p plus no, ma'am of ma'am h h answer answer but h okay h h okay okay no? so now next question question 12 28 weeks pregnant second gravida hmm? now patient is having p prom hmm? in pre in the earlier in this pregnancy because of preterm labor she has already received steroids hmm? on ultrasound is showing severe oligo and cephalic ctg is normal mother is stable Magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate. P prom. Why magnesium sulfate when she is not in established labor? CTG is normal. Mother is stable. When it is not eminent, why? Conservative treatment. Ah, it is conservative. Why you want to give you? It? Actually, you should start with erythromycin. Is there erythromycin out there? It's not there. So the option will be erythromycin right now. Okay? Because she is having P prom. See, magnesium sulfate you are going to give when the labor is imminent, okay? The patient is in established labor. The P prom also, because you have to continue the pregnancy with P prom. You can continue up to 37 weeks. Am I right? Yeah. So, why you want to give? Yes. Yeah, hmm? Now, question 13. According to NICE, what will be the most appropriate intervention for 28 years? Who has presented with 25 plus 6 weeks of gestation with preterm preterm? Yes, now you have to tell me this thing. Corticosteroids and topolis. Yes. B. Yeah. B. Okay. Corticosteroids plus tocolysis. Next. 39 years preterm labor. Primary patient at 27 weeks to uh, 27 weeks two days. She wishes to know that what will be done for the baby at birth. So which of the following statement is correct? Cot clamping will be delayed if the baby is within us. Yes. And you can wait up to three minutes. Okay. Three minutes, so, three minutes. No, no longer than three minutes. Okay. Now question 15. Can you see option and questions? I think yes. Yes, ma'am. 35 years old, 25 weeks at 25 weeks of gestation. Her concerns about fetal well-being and discussion about possible cesarean section and antenatal corticosteroids is being undertaken. The following is correct about antenatal corticosteroid administration to prevent respiratory distress syndrome in newborn. So, for whom you are going to give? So, for intrauterine growth restriction should be given between 24 to 34 weeks. Okay, in twins at increased risk of preterm delivery given up to 34 weeks, 6 days. In any woman at risk of preterm up to 34 weeks should be avoided in overt choreomnenitis. Robust this data. Is the right Actually, for that matter, you tell me almost all options are correct. Only thing it should be avoided. B is except for that matter. Because now they are telling that offer from 24 weeks. Previously, they used to consider. That's why I told you that this can be a past question. Some questions can be asked, okay? Because IUGR, you are grieving till 34 weeks. Why they have put this question? Because everywhere they are telling that it is from 24 weeks. And previously, they used to tell that consider. Got it? So here, all, yes, all options appears to be correct only. Only thing it should be avoided in over Korean immunitis is not correct here. Otherwise, now it is suggest that it is also useful from 24 to 26 weeks. That's why they are offering. Okay. Now so then, what is the correct answer? Actually, this question framing is only not correct because it is it has been taken from previous guidelines. So why why they are not telling? Option A is correct because they are written, they have written there at 24 weeks. Okay. Previously it was from 26 to 34 weeks. 
Okay, so according to their option, option B is correct. But according to me, it's a wrong frame question according to recent guideline. And only thing, everything is correct, all except it should be D. Okay. What do you think? Anybody has any doubts? Ma'am, it should not know? be given an over degree of nitrous. <laughs> it should be given. So here, all except should be there. The question should be framed like everything is true, all except. So then we in Korean we, also we, ah, we have to give. Ah, we can give. Yes. We can give. Okay. So this question framing or it, it, this question must be from the old book. Okay. Old book. Because this is a recently updated guideline. No? They have updated last year only regarding 24 weeks. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So nobody has any doubt? Any any other opinions? This question? No, ma'am. Yeah. Now, question 16. 32 years, Nali Paris at 22 weeks. She just had transvaginal scan. We showed that cervix is 22. Hmm? Past history of cone biops biopsy. So, what is the option? Cervical yes. encephalitis. Yes. Question 17. 23 years, primary, threatened preterm, 32 weeks. There is possibility of imminent preterm decision to administer antenatal corticosteroid is taken. Explaining the rational of treatment, all following statements are correct except are known to be safe for mother. Reduce the risk of maternal information. Yes. Reduce the risk of maternal information yes. is wrong. Correct. correct. Hmm? All other statements are correct. Okay? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Now, question 18, 20 years old, 33 weeks, 4 days. 6 hours history of particular painful uterine contraction with intact membrane. Confirm ultrasound is confirming that appropriate gestational age is So, diagnosis of unfinished preterm labor is made. So, which one of the appropriate, most appropriate action in relation to, uh, most appropriate thing in relation to the counseling? Option yes. C, antenatal stimulus will reduce neonatal RDS and mortality preterm birth occur. Yes. Yes. Okay. Correct. Any doubt? No, ma'am. Please proceed. This is a straightforward question. Now, next question. 28 years, 32 weeks. Threaten preterm, given corticosteroids for fetal lung maturity. Tocolysis is therefore considered the most effective tocolysis. If it depends. Yeah. 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 Gravida 4, para 2, 32 weeks with ruptured membranes. Cervical circulage was already there at 13 weeks because of two previous preterm deliveries and one second trimester loss. She is well with no signs of infection, no contracting. CTG normal, PPROM is confirmed. Scan confirm normal growth like a red Doppler, which is the management. Give steroids and remove suture when women goes into labor. <laughs> Actually, yes. After 48 hours is also this thing. Okay. Actually, what they are telling is suture, uh, you should not keep the suture. Okay. That's what. Okay. Keeping suture is not recommended for that matter, okay? Because it is used to, uh, like, it, it increases the risk of chorioaminitis. So, here the best option is give steroids and consider delayed suture removal for 48 hours, like after the steroid action is complete. Okay? Remember, what if she goes into labor before, like, we cannot predict when her labor will set Definitely. in, like, 48 hours? Yes, yes. If she goes in labor, we have to remove the suture. Okay. Right now that because they have given that she is not contracting right now and everything is normal. So according to a guideline, the latency is around seven days. Okay. If everything okay. is normal. Okay. Okay. Hmm? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. 
Now 20 years old, 26 weeks, 4 days. She attends a triage with history of spotting. Eclam examination, cervical loss is open for pelvic hemorrhage. No vaginal bleeding. Hmm? Neonatal unit is full and you are arranging transfer. What is the most appropriate management? Beta methasone, oral nephedipine, and Maxel. C. Maxel transfer. Hmm. So Maxel that's why. Maxel, that's why. Beta methasone. Okay. Because Maxel, you need monitoring. Beta methasone and nephedipine. Yes, beta methasone and nephedipine. You should not give Maxel during transfer because it requires monitoring. Okay. Okay. Now, babies born preterm have much higher risk of suffering from disabilities compared with those from term. Okay. What is the major long term consequences of prematurity? Neurodevelopmental yes. disability. Yes. Next. 35 years, second pregnancy at 30 weeks, 6 days. Hmm? Come, uh, come, comes with abdominal pain, normal vaginal delivery, PVS at term. Okay. I think this question was uh, discussed, no? This is a repeated question, I think. CTG shows 1 to 2 irregular contraction. Heart stress is normal. Vaginal examination is No, no, this was not discussed. Okay, yeah. Similar it question was discussed. Because it's more than 30. Ah, yes. To so, confirm. Yeah. These are two different questions. So now you are going to do, because it is more than 30 weeks, do TVS and confirm first. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So now I think everyone, everybody could do these questions. Any doubt? No, no doubt. Thank you so much for the session. Yeah. No, ma'am. Okay. Okay. One more thing in timetable, I will also update. I put on 30 revision. No, I think I have forgot to do this perennial tears guideline, GTG, and this obstetric anesthesia and analgesia. That dog is there. That is also important. Okay. So, we will do the, this thing on 38, okay? Hmm? In timetable, I have just, I will change it. That there is no, because these things are remaining actually. Okay? This GTG is my most important, perineal TS GTG. Okay. Okay? So, any doubts or should we close? Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so we will take one more for intrapartum care. You wanted, no? Actually, what I think is intrapartum care for healthy babies. That is the most complicated guideline. I don't think anything is complicated pregnancies. Because they have just given what to do for these complicated pregnancies. Okay? I don't think it is much matter. I will add anything if it is important. But I don't think that should be discussed. That need not to be discussed. That is an easy thing. Okay? Only thing is for healthy babies, it is very much complicated. Like what is the delayed, what is the suspected, what is confirmed delay, all these things are important. Okay? Okay, so okay. we will discuss that thing next week. Hmm? Okay, sometime. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Bye, thank you. bye friends. Thank you, ma'am.